Here in St. Luke's Roosevelt, we have done integrated services, not only in adult psychiatry, but also in child psychiatry. Our patients really come here seeking our services, seeking good quality care. We really see patients get better. The goal of the program is to work with families to really be able to maintain them in the community with community supports and decrease the amount of time that is spent in hospital and residential placement. At this school, everybody had the therapist, psychiatrist, everybody, social worker, they're here to help you. Looking at the whole individual is really important here and being able to help them lead the healthiest lives possible. And it's amazing what a little push and a little support will do in the beginning of someone's life when they're struggling. We really provide a lot of state-of-the-art treatment to a population that wouldn't necessarily have access to those services. You know, we're, we're a community mental health center in many, um, in many ways, but we also really bring together so many different treatments. And so we provide uh, thousands and thousands of services per year for children and their families. And we have a very wide array of children's services, and I think that's what really gives it its, its cachet in the sense that we're very community-oriented. We've been providing services for decades. Every student that's here is assigned an individual therapist for themselves, as well as a psychiatrist. They work with a whole team of clinicians who would provide them with their group therapy and their milieu therapy and their family therapy. And it's really, the, the main thing that we offer is just this very safe, therapeutic holding space for them. In CARES, it's like you guys are all individual. You know, like they focus on what they can do for you and how they can help you, not just to get you out of there, but more to like help you succeed. I had a difficult time, but the staff and my therapist have really worked with me to keep me in the program, and I kind of just made the choice, like, I don't want to be a failure. Without cares, I'd probably still be using drugs. I probably would have not graduated from high school. I wouldn't be working there now, and I probably just would have been lost. Challenges for us are the challenges that I would assume child services face everywhere, and that is proper screening and identification of, of disorders that require clinical uh, intervention, clinical treatment. The sooner that you can intervene, the more uh, able you are to make profound changes in the trajectory of a person's life. Studies have shown that 20% of all adolescents have some type of mental health uh, diagnosis. But out of that 20%, only 20% of that 20% is actually getting mental health services. And the school-based population is a natural place to have mental health services within the schools because this is where kids are. Being there and letting them know uh, and helping them assess what is in their best interest, okay, so that they can get to that healthy, functional status as adults, uh, I think is part of our goal. A lot of these kids, when I've first seen them, don't necessarily believe they're going to live beyond 25. And they don't necessarily believe that they can get a college education. And so part of the therapy is really opening up their perspective of, of what is possible. We really try to work with first providing safety, you know, helping establish a trusting relationship so that you can move on to some more of the work in terms of building skills to cope with stressors, um, helping the family understand where the child's at and providing the best, um, providing for their needs. My son Stefan was having a, a little bit of a hard time and he wind up at the emergency room in St. Luke's. Well, my life was a complete disaster before, like in and out hospitals. And, so that was back when I was, you know, really depressed. We didn't know where to go from there. And uh, the psychiatrist at the hospital mentioned that they had a, a very good adolescent program at St. Luke's. We have a dialectical behavioral therapy program that helps high-risk adolescents who might be cutting, um, might be doing other high-risk behaviors that really get better. Um, and that's in part due to our staff who are just so incredibly dedicated and motivated and all of which just go above and beyond. Claire's like a, a good friend. 
to me. I don't even consider her a therapist. Like I talked to her like I would to my friends. Through her, he opened up and they figured out what, what was wrong with him and what help he needed. Like before I couldn't say two words to my dad. Now like he came, even though he didn't want to, he came to see Claire with my mom. And we all talked. It helped my teenage boy figure out what he was going through. It helped me as a parent. It just leads me in a positive direction. I'm not, you know, like, I stay on the right path. It gave us um, a middleman to speak to. And uh, because no one teaches you how to be a parent. I didn't know what was wrong with my son. I knew that he had some serious problems and needed help, and we were just, we were in a bad state. They had plugged us in and connected us to all of these services within weeks. And almost immediately, our life started, the quality of our life started to change. The clinic here did team meetings with his school to educate his school and to shadow the teachers and so on that was working. So not only did I feel supported, the school felt supported. He just became this amazing student, amazing child. So it's not just a place where you just come and get treatment. It's very much a part of our extended family. When Daniel was younger, the play therapy, even though you didn't know it was like trying to get you to figure out things, um, was so good that they were able to extrapolate the things that were bothering him and how we were gonna deal with it then, then after. So we've come a long way and I, a lot has to do with the ability that St. Luke's had great therapists that worked with all of us. You know, it was, it's not just a one dimensional therapy. Our kids feel like we get it here. Not only we get it, but the larger hospital gets it. And there are people out there that believe in them. In this day and age, everything is uh, Facebook and texting and internet, and there is no uh, human connection. And I think this is what I want to reiterate about St. Luke. There is human connections, and kids need that. It's family first, and you feel that in every aspect of the services that you receive. We have these wonderful landmark buildings on Morningside Drive between 113th and 114th Street called the Plant and Scrims or Pavilions. The infrastructure of the building is in, in, in serious need of rehabilitation to the tune of many, many millions of dollars. We're looking for people who have that interest uh, both in our, in our children and in, in the health of the community, the mental health of the community, but also the, uh, an eye towards restoring these buildings to their former glory. One of the opportunities we're going to have in the Plant Scrimser Pavilion is to actually physically integrate primary care services for adults and children and mental health services and addiction services if they need it. We would love for everyone to be together in one site where we can really do the best type of coordination we can um, and really in the most inviting, homey, child-friendly kind of place. If a donor came in and actually saw the work that we were doing and spoke to the patients you wouldn't really have to say anything um, because it's clear that we do very good work. It's clear that uh, we're devoted to this population. It's clear that the community is very connected to us. They know if they want services, they're going to come here to the Child and Family Institute. 